Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. This video will be the fourth part of our architectural drawing series with SketchUp to Illustrator workflow. So far we've covered the floor plan, elevation and site plan. If you want to learn how we create this perspective section drawing, keep on watching. Let's open our 3D model for taking the exports. To get a section perspective, you'll need to place a section plane, then you can go to the camera and select perspective. Since you're not going for a parallel projection, you can rotate the camera to get a view you like. After you adjusted it to your liking, make sure to add this new scene to your list of scenes. To recolor the section fills, go to Window Styles. There, click the Edit menu and select Edit again. Here you have the section options. We'll go ahead and color our section fills white. And for the section lines, we'll choose a dark gray. This color difference will allow us to easily select the section lines in Illustrator later on. Now, we'll take two PDF exports, one with the building alone, and one with the background on its own. Again, working on separate PDFs will be useful for editing in Illustrator. Go to File, Export, and select 2D Graphic. There, you can choose PDF format. Now, unhide the environment and follow the same steps for the background export. This time, we'll be hiding the building and the trees, since we'll be adding prettier looking ones in Illustrator later. Again, go to File, Export, and select 2D Graphic. Now, you can unhide for the last time to add shadows. You can open shadows by clicking the shadows button, then you can play with the sliders until you find an angle you like. If you go to the window and select shadows, you can also play with the color intensity of your shadows. We'll match the shadow color to the section line color, this way the shadows will blend into the drawing smoothly. To only export shadows, you'll need to go to view, edge style, and uncheck edges. Go to view again, this time uncheck the profiles. We made the section fills white, we turned them into the same color as the shadows for this export. See. Everything matches. To export the shadows, go to File, Export, and select to D-Graphic. We'll export as PNG. Go to PNG options and make sure to check the transparent background. That's all we're going to do in SketchUp. Now we'll move on to Illustrator and place our PDFs and PNG into a new file. Place each image into their dedicated layers. Background goes to the bottom layer building to the middle and shadows to top. We'll start with editing the building layer. Since we've exported it from the 3D model, there are some missing lines and others that do not look very clean. To fix that, you can select all and go to strokes panel and choose round cap and round joint options. This way, lines will look much smoother. We quickly add the missing lines. We'll select a black line in the background, then go to select, same, fill color, and stroke to select all black lines. Then we'll turn their color into a soft gray. For this reason, we made the section lines in different colors in SketchUp earlier. To be able to easily choose the lines that enter the section and those that do not, now we select the section lines and make them black and increase their stroke weight to highlight the section more. This way we can easily place the section lines on a separate layer. We make the background the same soft gray color as the section fillers and lower their stroke weight to further emphasize the section. We have created the line hierarchy of the drawing. We'll quickly rename the layers and move on to live paint the building. To color the building, select all, go to object, live paint make. Your live paint group is ready. For coloring, we choose white, then we'll select the live paint bucket tool from the toolbar. To color every surface in a group, you'll need to click the group three times. To edit the live paint group, you'll need to expand it and then ungroup it twice. Part of our building was sitting on the ground. So, we draw the soil line with the pencil tool. Normally we don't cut furniture into sections, 
so we change them to the background color as well. Now we can move on to the essential part of this drawing. We open a separate layer for section details. To add details that match your materials and construction, you can search for specific detailed drawings or you can look for projects with similar construction. We've prepared a content bundle that includes all the vectors and details used in this illustration. To get it, the link is in the description box below. We start by drawing the cladding detail of the wall. Since we show the thicknesses and details, we'll mostly draw double lines. Consider connections as you draw, but remember to match the detail level to the scale of the drawing. To copy a selection, drag and move while holding the Option key. And to repeat the last copy multiple times, press Command and D. Be careful not to leave any open-ended, non-connecting lines. All the details should fit together. Since this is an exterior wall, we will add insulation material. This insulation drawing is also available in the package with vector group and pattern versions, whichever is easier for you to use. You should repeat the same actions when adding details. Adding insulation to any place that has contact with the exterior is one of the main rules. So, we add insulation to the roof as well. We'll place the insulation inside the roof drawing. To do that, we'll copy the roof and turn its outline from strokes to fill. Then we'll select both roof fill and insulation, go to object, clipping mask, make. It is that easy. Or you could simply use the insulation pattern we made for the fill. Our building has steel beams and a frame system. To represent that, we'll add I-beam drawings. Again, Use Command D to repeat the copy action. We'll add a deck cladding for the terrace. You can simply add line patterns instead of drawing repeating lines. Open the swatches library. Go to Patterns, Basic Graphics, Lines. To rotate the pattern, right click, go to Transform, select Rotate. From there, uncheck the Transform Objects button and change the angle. You can copy it to other floors. We add insulation detail to the ceiling of the terrace at the back, just as we did on the roof and exterior wall earlier. We also add cladding details to the corners. We add insulation under the cantilever in the front part as well. We add cladding detail to all other corners. We increase the scale of the interior floor covering pattern and differentiate it from the exterior material. But as it scaled up, the lines got thicker. To fix this, go to Swatches panel and choose the pattern, then click Edit Pattern. From there you can select all and change the stroke weight. The ground floor ceiling will be suspended. We give the thicknesses and add the hanger wire details. For the ground floor, we copy the same flooring details from the top floor, and the same deck pattern as well. We add a composite material pattern under the deck. Foundation isn't visible from the section plane, so we represent them with dashed lines. We increase the ground line's stroke weight to emphasize it more. We bring the ends together to create a surface so that we'll be able to apply the soil pattern to it. We are moving on with the patterns and drew a surface to the front deck to add the line pattern. To change its color, go to Edit, Edit Colors and Recolor Artwork.
Repeat the same steps for the deck in the back. And same steps for the interior floors as well. The only difference is we'll use a seamless wood pattern this time. The ground didn't seem dark enough. We add one more layer of pattern. This time we will use a seamless stone pattern. To delete the excess parts, select both patterns and click the Shape Builder tool. Click on them while pressing the Option key. Now we can start adding lively details to the drawing. We'll add grass vectors on the ground line and under the deck. Then we'll add interior decorations to the walls of our coffee shop. Don't forget to add the customers enjoying their coffee, studying, chatting, and so on. You can also use the Shape Builder tool to delete the back parts of the characters sitting on the chair. Another method is to copy the back of the chairs and place them on top of your character. The background looks a bit pale, so we are making the street and some buildings light gray. We also add a pattern to the sky to make it stand out a bit more. That's all the vector content we will add. Now we can make the shadow layer visible and lower its opacity to 30%. Some characters will remain in the shadows, but we don't want all of them to be shadowed. So we copy the characters we want to be on top to the shadow layer. As you see, they stand out much more in this way. We'll go ahead and crop the shadow image to fit the drawing. And the drawing is done. We have one tip left to show you how to recolor this drawing with a single command. To do that, export the drawing as JPEG and open it in Photoshop. Go to Adjustments and select Photo Filter. There, you'll have many color filter presets. Choose the one you like. We'll go with the cooling filter. You can change the filter's intensity with the slider below. We'll keep it at 50. Then you can further edit the image. We'll first change the hue and saturation. We highly recommend you to play with brightness and contrast. It makes a big difference. It looks much better, right? And that completes our detailed section perspective drawing tutorial. We really like the blue filtered version. Which version was your favorite? Is there any representation style would you like us to try? Feel free to share with us in the comments. Until next time.